Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. There are many different coaches to help you move your life and or your business along. And they're all very effective in many different ways. And some of them center on certain areas to help you move along. I found a coach that is very unique because his main focus is family businesses. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes, conflicts, personality, ego, the financial aspect of it. Now, of course, he coaches in many different ways, but family business is a niche that we're going to look at today. I never even knew something like that existed. It's Inspire Coaching Group. He's Dave Shields, and he's with us today. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Doing great, Steve. How about yourself? Fantastic. Wow. What a great idea. So I just got off the phone with my attorney in regard to a family business. I'm not not even kidding. You can't make this up. And he was, I'm not even, this is not even 10 minutes ago. And he was telling me about a client he had that owned a deli and we just got into family business. And now you're here. (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Little synchronicity, isn't it? So so yeah, hopefully in, 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 uh, in family businesses, we can avoid the attorneys as much as possible. Totally. Uh, And yeah, yeah. And I can help do that. So when you work with somebody about their family business and on a coaching level, let's look at some of those things that, that you're helping somebody move their life uh, forward with. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's really different uh, with each company that I might work with. I, I just started this week with a, um, a, a small company uh, from Pennsylvania, and, and they're, they're really um, struggling with who's, who's in charge uh, who has the right to make decisions in which area of the business. And so there's really a governance issue in terms of kind of a hierarchy of, of who makes decisions, how those decisions get made, uh, and who has ultimate authority as well. So that's just one example. Transparency, I'm sure, is, is critical in these situations. It is anywhere, but especially with a family business. Uh, and also defining roles. Do you find that a lot of times... Those in the family don't know what they're supposed to be doing, or they get lax or lazy, or only do what they want to do, but not what's needed to be done. Yeah, I think that's that's a great comment. I, that, that happens a lot in family businesses. We we have this great idea uh, as a family, or maybe a, a person in the family, maybe it's a husband or a wife uh, going into business together, and and we just we, in, in, in in the early stages of business, oftentimes I know with the two businesses. The two family businesses that I have started that that you really end up wearing all the hats, and so as you can, then you begin to hire and delegate uh, a- after a certain period of success in the business. Um, but family members who are then part of that business oftentimes have loose, loosely structured roles, uh, and sometimes what we have to do with that is talk about you know what are the roles that are their leadership roles that are important in this business. And, and what are the roles and responsibilities for that particular job? Uh, and, and then sometimes it's a fit for, for a family member. Other times it's not, and they need to, to redefine a different role maybe to move into. Now, we're, we're identifying many different areas where challenges come up. What do you hear most often when working with somebody on a coaching level in regard to their fam- family business? You know, conflict is probably the, the, the mm-hmm. highest um, comment um, when I work with family businesses, and then that conflict can come from many different directions. But I would say that folks get into some kind of conflict around some of the issues that we've already talked about here this morning, and and then they need some help or mediation uh, help in the process of, of solving that. Do you find that you're the I'm trying to find the best way to describe this the go between the mediator, truth, the true mediator in some of those situations. Yeah, the, the, the case that I referenced just a moment ago, it, it was actually the daughter. She, she doesn't have anything to do with the business. Uh, her, her dad started the business. Her brother is in the business with her dad. And, uh, but she's kind of the family peacemaker, right? So they turned to her, um, and then she found me. And, and so she started the process with, with me to just kind of fill me in. And then I was then connected with, with the, uh, the brother and the dad 
uh, in this uh, in this company. So um, they they're really going to utilize me as a mediator. Um, and and, and it's, it, one of my one of my mantras is all coaching is is personal coaching. All coaching is personal about personal transformation. So you know, as I work to mediate with these two individuals, I'm also taking a look at them and and where where they may need to to really grow or heal and and, uh, and move to a better place in in their life and leadership position in the business. Now you referenced. Uh you owning some family businesses. Tell us about your journey, David, that got you to where you are and uh, helping people move their businesses forward. Oh, holy cow. Um, I started, uh, I had humble beginnings. Um, We had uh, our first child, Nicholas, who's now 27 years old, and we knew that we wanted somebody to stay home with him. And and, uh, Christine at the time, very, very funny lady, um, she she looked at me and said, well, you know that can't be me, right? (laughs) (laughs) And so I left a, a position, a, a uh, supervisor position at uh, Indiana University in a, in a psych uh, department that we had there and, and uh, came home to be a stay-at-home dad. So my, my background was I had a dual bachelor's in psychology and social work, went to a Christian college, uh, which was, was uh, important to me then, and, and my faith is certainly uh, super important to me today. Um, and then I went on to get my clinical, uh, my master's in clinical social work. And so I came home to be a stay-at-home dad. We, we renovated one side of the garage. So I started uh, my business in a garage, basically. We had a little uh, office there, a waiting room, and a, and, a, and a bathroom for folks. And, you know, and I, I had a nanny there for some hours uh, during the day. Uh, so I was a stay-at-home dad, and I launched Kenosis Counseling Center um, out of my home office there. And then within about three years, we, we actually built out a brick-and-mortar establishment uh, the, the, the business grew in, in some wonderful ways. We were very blessed, and uh, we ended up having multiple locations around the metropolitan Indianapolis area. So that's mm-hmm. how I got me start. I love it. Wow. So, you know, and I'm sure, you know, because you guys are no longer together, um, there was conflict. You know, it's, it, it comes along many times. I don't know if it's even avoidable with a family business. Oh, it's just not avoidable, Steve. It, it, it just, it's just going to come along. Um, and, and some of the conflict that Christine and I had, we are both very different people. And uh, as we ran Kinesis Counseling Center together, um, we would butt heads oftentimes. I, I am the, the creator, the innovator, um, the pioneer type of person. Um, I obviously launched the business, and, and it was my idea to do so. Christine is more of, of a guardian. She's, she's a, a guardian of what has been. She's a guardian of ritual and tradition. Uh, she's a guardian of the way things are working right now. And so I would go to her with ideas about how to expand the business or how to get on the cutting edge of our, of our industry. And, and her first thought was always, what's it going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, do we have the resources to, to really put that in place? And, and sometimes I come with two or three big ideas. And, you know, she ended up being the tether for me because I could get really my head up in the clouds with lots of kind of visioning uh, pieces going on, she would tether me and pull me back to earth, and she asked the hard questions. And you, as you can imagine, when you, when you have a great idea and you go, it's like a kid uh, really working on a school project, walking into the classroom, sitting that baby down in front of the teacher, being just so full of excitement, and the first thing he sees from the teacher is a scowl or a grimace, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, it just, and it just crushes him. So um, those of us who kind of are innovators or creators, we don't like to have our ideas uh, knocked down. Um, but what's important about what she brought to the table was, was she was able to ask the hard questions. She was able to get me focused uh, sometimes on a single project instead of multiple projects at once uh, and to be able to see that. I also then began to understand that was a strength uh, of hers. I didn't always see it that way uh, and that it was valuable to me and to the business in general. So uh, that, that grew over the course of time, and uh, we ended up being – uh, maybe better business partners than we were married partners. So, yeah. hmm. Well, you never know until you know. And you each brought different things to the table. It sounded like you were the dreamer and she was the, the voice of reason you know, on the financial wow. side. Yes. Uh, but you need both. In, within us, I believe, we have to. You have to be a dreamer. You have to... You know, look at the, maybe the practical aspect of things and blend the two together. Um, interesting. So at that time, 
you were both coaches and or counselors? Uh, Christina is also a clinical social worker, so she's a psychotherapist. And, sure. and then I was a psychotherapist for 36 years. Um, and then I hung the therapy hat up um, a couple years ago when I started Inspire Coaching and now just solely do coaching. How unique. Seriously, <laughs> you know, I, the, we know there's always been a reason for what you do, helping family businesses, but it never just occurred to me that, that, that that's a niche that needs to be filled. Yes, you can, and I'm sure you also do, right? Life coaching, relationship coaching, leadership coaching, and all that, right? Yes, we do, yes. Wow, interesting. Uh, when it comes to managing conflicts, let's throw out some, maybe some practical advice you know, short of calling a counselor at that moment or a coach, uh, you're dealing with a conflict within your family business. What's your first thought that somebody should do? Well, I, I think that the, the first thought, and this, I, I have to grit as I say this because it was certainly an Achilles heel for me early in the process of running Kenosis Center with Christine, was start softly. Um, mm. You know, I, and uh, being a passionate, sensitive guy, I always wanted to charge in pull out my bazooka and, and fire away. Uh, and so that's probably the first piece of advice would be to, 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 if you have something that's important to say, maybe take a little bit of time. Um, decide how that person could p- possibly hear that in the best possible way. For Christine, the example that we gave a moment ago, I would have to get facts and numbers prepared to be able to justify this vision or idea with Christine. Otherwise, we were going to have conflict Mm. uh, almost straight off the the cuff. But I think soft startup, the the way that we start a a talk, 97% of the time is is the greatest predictor of how it's going to end. It almost sounds in these situations, of course, we've all heard about the the five love languages, right? It it almost sounds that in a family business, you need to know – how the other person communicates, if you will, their, their, their family business love language. Uh, and if you don't like to your example and to your point that she wanted to see numbers to back up what your vision and your dream was, that's the way she operates. And that's fine. That's how she does it. Maybe you do it a different way, but you needed to speak her language in order to, to move things forward at that moment. Does that sound reasonable? It does sound reasonable, and it it reminds me of something I was thinking about just the other day, which is, you know, anybody that consults with businesses or family-owned businesses, they might say in a kind of an umbrella term uh, that that the biggest issue uh, or the biggest need uh, for family-owned businesses uh, is is communication. I I would dive underneath that. I think that's the right answer, but it's not the whole story, right? Um, the whole story is that we are individuals, and, and uh, communication is great, but if we dive under communication, um, understanding uh, who we're in leadership with in, in our family business, understanding each individual, and then beyond then even understanding um, a level of acceptance. Uh, being able to really admire the other people, uh, the other family members in your business uh, for how they are built. So uh, once they feel understood, once they feel affirmed and accepted, uh, things just go much better when it comes to conflict. I'm seeing this in a whole different light based on our conversation. And I see where you, you know, how you're so great at what you do in terms of coaching and family businesses. When you're working in a company situation and it's not family, you you identify who you're working with. You know, there's Jen. She likes this. She doesn't like that. Uh, This is how she she operates. This is how she works. This is how she's more efficient. We got Mike over there. He handles it a totally different way. So it's on our radar. But when it's a family business, I believe sometimes we take it for granted. And, you know, sometimes we may say, you know, they'll, they'll understand. You know, I'm going to do it this way. They're going to understand. You know, why? Because <laughs> they're, they're family. So we, we put up those boundaries and that sensitivity when it's our coworkers, not family. But when it's family, we view it a different way. It's almost if, you know, sometimes we have carte blanche, you know, in some areas or um, it's, it's a different dynamic. That's where I'm going with that. Yeah, which, which really just, Steve, of the, the kind of the overarching uh, idea of accountability. And uh, so how are we going to define who does what, who has power, who can make decisions, and, and how are we going to hold each other accountable? Sometimes mm. family members 
um, have a really difficult time. They, they love the other person. Yep. Uh, they don't want to hurt their feelings or they don't want to have conflict. So they may not bring up an issue yep. um, uh, that, that really needs to be brought up around accountability to maybe a certain role. Uh, and, and then it, it holds and holds and holds until the, the dam bursts. Uh, and then there's usually some kind of a big blow up. You said that easier than I did. <laughs> I was kind of mm. alluding mm. To, the, to what you just said. Because um, if you're at work and not family, um, there'll be a meeting and we need to address these things. When it's a family yeah. situation, it's uncomfortable to address the fact that Mike is not handling what he should be handling. And a lot of times we just slide it under the rug and we don't want to deal with it because we know where that eventually would go. But then that's where you come in. And all that being said, I, I would have to guess that with coaching and identifying the challenges, the conflicts, and every family business is going to have them, that the family may even get stronger and, and closer. Would you agree? Oh, that, that definitely happens. And it's a beautiful thing to see as folks really break down barriers, sometimes barriers that existed prior to the business, right? Family mm-hmm. dynamics don't just go away when you start a business, right? The family dynamics you had kind of travel with you into the business. And so sometimes, you know, business issues or conflict that happens inside the business once the business starts really is is a reflection not just of of the business not doing well in the moment, but it's a reflection of that family dynamic that maybe never has done well. And Mm. and so some healing uh, and growth around that helps the business absolutely. Does it make the, the family tighter? Does it increase intimacy? Absolutely. Would you say that uh, many times when you have those challenges that eventually when you work through them, th- through coaching, that they turn into something different? Like it turns into growth now that we've, we've taken this and now we've, we've, we've turned that into an opportunity? Yes, yes. And it, it reminds me of a couple that I work with who are, uh, are in business together. And, and he is uh, on the Enneagram, which is one of the tools that I use for assessment purposes, he is a peacemaker uh, and really kind of the, the, the top, the CEO of the business. And, and she is an eight. She is a, the challenger. And, and so um, she um, almost resented his style of leadership. And, and so as a challenger, she was, she's much more confident, much more confrontive, much more kind of in your face, uh, and sometimes even in his face. And as she began to understand, he did the assessment, it came out peacemaker, which didn't surprise me at all. And, and she began to really try to, again, have that understanding of him, then begin to, to reframe uh, his lack of confrontation with employees was really a strength. Um, he, he values overall harmony and peace. Uh, he values the, the happiness of the individual employees. And, and so she began to have a more of an understanding and a respect for his style um, as, as, as a peacemaker. Now, here's an interesting piece. As she um, backed down a little bit and, and put away her flamethrower, as I call it with her, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and he felt understood, validated, and accepted, he then became, started to become, with, with my coaching help, more assertive. Uh, with employees, and then started to hold folks more accountable uh, on his own. Uh, he he wasn't doing that when when he and his partner were at odds. I can't. Now that we're having this conversation, and and I I've I've learned that somebody like you exists. I don't see how you could run a family business without a coach, and I really really mean that. And I've. I've been through family business situations and eventually, uh, yeah, there were challenges. They didn't go as well as expected sometimes for sure. Uh, so I, I can't imagine not having a coach, <laughs> if anything, a mediator. Yeah. And I, I think that uh, women in business seem to have more of an open mind to do coaching and, and getting that kind of support. Men are still coming along. Um, I, in fact, I had a, a discovery session with a young man uh, two days ago who said, you know, I'm really almost embarrassed that I even have to ask for help for something that I think our family ought to be able to take care of on its own. Wow. <laughs> and and I, I said to him, I said, you know, I've, I've been in business 27 years, and I almost always have had a mentor, business coach, leadership coach, um, 
it, behind every good leader, there should always be another good leader supporting that person. Mm. And and so he softened a little bit and said, okay. Uh, but his pride was was pretty strong, and and it was hard for him uh, to reach out for the help that he that he did with me. I believe that everything is a lesson. We go through life learning these lessons, and it moves our lives forward. Oh, wow. And and if you were to, and I don't like to say should should have done this, should have done that, but if you were to look back with your your career overall, is there anything that you would have done a little bit differently? You know, your business with, with your wife at the time and, and all of that. Anything that might have tweaked a little differently? Well, I, I'm grinning as I say this. I was one of those men that I just talked about. When I first launched uh, Kenosis Counseling Center, I really felt um, kind of, I was pretty prideful and, and really wanted to be able to, to do it. felt like I had to do it all on my own. And, and so I, I felt like, it, and, you know, leadership, when you're at the top or the CEO, it's kind of a lonely experience. Mm. And, and uh, you don't have to be up there alone. And it, it was hard for me uh, to really learn to, to ask for help, uh, to hire help, uh, to defer some activities to folks. And, and so I think that the, probably the big lesson for me uh, early in the process was I, I failed at many, many of the, the tasks uh, of running my first business because I, I absolutely refuse to allow somebody else to help in the process. Hmm. So you just didn't ask for help. You didn't, you, you, you just want to remain independent and say, I got this. I'm doing this. I'm going to take care of it. Well, then Joel, my fiance, even today would probably say I'm still a fairly stubborn guy, but, <laughs> but, but, but today in my life, both personally and professionally in, in this uh, inspired coaching business, um, I, I I love the support I have. I have a fantastic circle of support uh, in my life, both from a personal standpoint, but also from a, a business standpoint. I have a, a business mentor uh, and then another great friend who's uh, an ex-CEO of, of a uh, Fortune 500 company. And, uh, and those folks uh, are, are awesome uh, supports to have um, as, I, uh, as I try to build the Inspire Coaching business. Love it. Fantastic talking with you. So everything you've said, very inspiring, not just for somebody in a family business, but, you know, and many different levels, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to life in general, navigating relationships, what's, what's, what's your family business? That's uh, all about the relationships. Um, Dave, how does somebody yeah. find you? And is it a, do you do a, uh, you know, a consult, consult for free in the beginning just to, you know, check out the relationship? Yeah, I call those discovery sessions and they're sure. really important. They're, they're kind of a two-way interview, right? Uh, it's me interviewing them to see if I feel like I can really be of help to them. Uh, and it's also them interviewing me to get a sense of who I am and whether or not they can trust me. Um, family matters uh, in, inside a business are really sick. It's kind of sacred ground. And so they have to make a decision about whether they want to invite me into that sacred ground or not. So that's a discovery session. And, and I'll spend sometimes... Uh, depending on the number of family members that want to be involved or need to be involved, I'll do two or three calls with different family members, uh, all of which I call discovery sessions for free, just to see if the fit's there and if I can be helpful. So that's that's what I offer uh, for anybody. You can reach us. Our business number is 317-721-7478. Uh, if you don't reach me, uh, leave a voicemail. I always get back with you within 24 hours during the business week. And you can also take a look online uh, at inspire-coaching.us and take a, you can get on there and, and read a little bit about what we, what we offer. You can also see what we stand for, what our values are. Um, I've de- developed what's called the Harmony Model, which mm-hmm. is really a, a, a culmination of, of my 30-some years in the personal growth and healing field. Uh, and so you can, you can uh, take a good look and uh, make a decision about whether you want to contact me or not. Fantastic talking with you. And yes, that that was on my radar, the the harmony model. And next time we get together, would we would it be okay if we talk about that? I'd love to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just uh, you know, on your website, learning a little bit about it, and uh, it, it looks very effective. Great having you here today. Really appreciate it, Dave. Thanks so much for having me, Steve. I appreciate that. You have a great rest of your day. You too. Mm-hmm. 
Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by End Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.